Christmas, Coach. Merry Christmas. <laughs> What'd you get? Um, yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna break that out at the holiday Christmas party. <laughs> Sweet party of two, Christmas party. We'd like to reserve the back. Uh, you know, big fancy room. Uh, yeah. Room 50, and there'll be two of us here. Yep, just you and me. Have yeah, a little just, uh, coffee. Just two of us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Christmas we'll, coffee. Yep, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll upgrade to an everything bagel instead of my usual whole wheat. Yeah, let's not get carried away, man. Let's yeah, just I know. Be consistent. We got <laughs> yeah, we don't want to get extravagant in our ways. But uh, Merry Christmas to everyone if you're taking the time to uh, away from friends and family and. Or if we're, you know, we're doing you a favor because a lot of you are stuck with your in-laws right now and just don't want to be. So if you're standing outside your house pretending like you're taking a walk but really you're listening to our podcast, we appreciate you as well. This is, uh, you know, episode 227 yep. of the Crushing Iron Triathlon Podcast, Christmas Eve edition. Ho, ho, ho. Christmas Eve edition. Boy, it's uh, what a feeling it is to be Christmas Eve right now. And, and working. So I uh, remember that, people, that uh, while your other favorite podcasts are probably slumming it up with dressing and ham and stocking stuffers, we're over here slaving away, giving you the most mediocre podcast we possibly can on this, holiday, on this, <laughs> on this Christmas Eve. <laughs> in between working on training plans. Yeah, in between know. working on training plans. Uh, if this is, it's. I'm going to highly doubt it's your first time listening, but if it is, we appreciate it. This is, again, the Crushing Iron Triathlon Podcast. We come to you every Monday and Thursday, uh, finishing up a what was a, a really, really great 2018 for, uh, for both you and I, I think, um, and everything to do with this podcast and our... our Close Facebook group and the people we've met, and so it's been a really, really great year. Looking forward to uh, an, an outstanding, hopefully, 2019 to continue the the slow burn uh, that you and I like to call it, uh, and uh, keep moving forward as best we can. And if you uh, are interested at all in anything else that we do, you can always go to the website crushing iron crushing iron dot com. <laughs> I'm all about I'm all about handing out your email, man. I'm like the I'm like the spam podcast host. Yeah, crushing <laughs> anybody, iron. Anybody ever? filtered us they would just grab your email out of our uh out of our uh, podcast no you can go to crushingiron.com and uh see all the things that we offer from some analysis to coaching and training packages training camps blog videos and then the biggest thing right now is we are counting down to what's going to be like the last week of uh we're doing 2.99 for our club membership, which lasts 12 months. Uh, you get unlimited access to all of our training plans, as well as a 30-minute uh, consultation call with Mike. He's your man. He'll be with you the whole step of the way through all of your training plans. And then at your for the A race of your choice, you will get a 12-week customized plan uh, from me. And that's right now. It's 2.99. That goes up to 3.99 on January 1st. So uh, don't wait. Get on it. Yeah. It's uh, Christmas Eve, so you still have time to buy that for a Christmas Day present. Ooh, that would be a nice gift. What a gift! It's I'm telling for you, you guys that haven't really done much shopping. You can just be like, "Hey, babe, look what I got you," and just show it to you on your phone. Like you can, you can beat the, <laughs> yeah. you can beat the traffic. You don't have to go to the mall. You don't have to do anything. You can just be like, "Hey, check your inbox. I got, I got one for you," and just forward like a little. A little email and uh, but it is, we've actually had quite a few people do it as as gifts for family or friends and and loved ones. So yeah. or just uh, anonymous athletes that they felt like needed something like that in their lives. So mm-hmm. uh, it's broken down real nicely on the website. You can check it out there. It's on the tab all the way to the right. But uh, check it out, uh, crushingiron.com club membership, and we look forward to working with as many of you as as we can this next year. Yep, and if you are sending it. Uh like a, a digital gift. There must be some kind of like Instagram app or something that wraps the link up in a pretty little bow or something like that. If not, somebody just stole that idea and it's going to make millions. Pretty good idea <laughs> right there. It is a pretty good idea. Uh, what is your... Because, I mean, I'll be honest with you folks, we're going to make this a fairly short podcast today. Uh, yeah. We're working overtime. What is the biggest thing you learned this last year? Uh, are you? Is that what you're asking me or the the people? I'm I, I'm asking you. Um, I I mean, uh, about racing. 
anything through this whole this whole process? Um, I think uh, I think there's two things I learned that are important. Like in the overall scheme of ball, and I'm just going to keep it in a triathlon because it it's transferable to life. I think like this, but um, for me, it's it's been about learning how the importance of of patience and and you know as our mantra goes hurrying slowly just uh mm-hmm. moving through the the steps in an appropriate way and letting you know having patience with the your build and how to um go from point A to point B without jumping everything in between mm. uh that's one thing and then during the race uh which is my A race, which was Louisville this year, I learned to try to remember what we always preach, which is don't believe anything you feel. But I also realized during my Ironman Louisville that the uh, one thing I did was I kind of threw away the race because I had an unrealistic goal. Whereas if I could have readjusted, it would have been a heck of a lot better finish and I think it would have been manageable. That's that's one of the things that I'm trying to keep in mind here is like if you're not really feeling something right now, just kind of adjust it. Don't try to keep going towards something unrealistic at the moment. Just mm-hmm. move in the right direction kind of thing. Um, what about you, man? Have you got something a little more concrete than that? Or like is there a well, big, I mean, I big think lesson? It's, uh, no, I mean, I think it's all kind of concrete to, you know, to your own, you know, it's all relative. You know, for me... I think one of the biggest takeaways that I have probably from just for the whole year, both from coaching and personally um, in being supported and through camp, especially through camps is just, is how, is how genuine people really want you to actually care. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think, and I was thinking about this the other day on, a run i went and i was texting i think my cousin because she was asking me about you know earphones and stuff that about you know i think she was going to get her husband uh some earphones and she was like do you know what do you use and i was like i just i don't use it when i run i was like i, I really like to i really like to disconnect mm-hmm. and then i was like wait a minute that it makes zero sense because when we do things like that we should call it connecting like when we're scrolling through social media and we're always plugged in, that really is for the log part. For a, a large part, in some ways, it, it's largely a disconnect. We do it to kind of disconnect from our own reality and what's really in the moment. Oh, yeah, the and then, opposite. And then, and, yeah, it's the opposite. It really is. It's the opposite. And then we go out for runs, we call it disconnecting, but really it's <laughs> it's the most useful, healthy, genuine form of connection uh, in going out and doing something with yourself that nobody else can touch. Like, which is, it's one of my favorite things about swimming. Even when I'm in a funk, if I go swimming, like I think people, you know, people joke about all the time, you can hop in the pool and swim for an hour and all of a sudden you solve all the world's problems. (laughs) You can't really remember your remedies, but you just think because you can't, I know some people wear earphones and stuff, but you're, you're largely untouchable. If you leave your, your, uh, any kind of like a swim pod or swim P3 or your phone, like in your pool back locker room, you're, you're untouched. It's just you and your own thoughts and connect and connecting or just connection with other people, I think is something that while you do have to have these online communities like like we have, you know, obviously in um you know, in the Crushing Iron Close Facebook group. I think it's a great community and it's a way of connecting digitally. But I think one of the things that I've kind of been surprised at in what I feel like is like even the sport of triathlon with Swift and, and Trainer Road and all these things are like really gearing people towards just connecting online mm-hmm. uh i think i've even like seen somewhere where people have like tried to you know they like swift races and things like that and i think competition is healthy and i think it serves a purpose but what has really struck me is people's desire and um just them really really wanting a way to connect personally with another individual with a coach with People of their, you know, people of the same mindset who want the same kind of, uh, who have the same perspective on things, and, and and you know, with the camps that we've had and how great they've grown, and then you know, we've got, 
I mean, I think the perfect example is we're having our our first ever like you know, we call it like a run retreat here uh, in Feb in February. It's going to be cold. We're going to do a lot of running, uh, and we have like sixty two people coming because that's all that's all we can fit. Mm-hmm. We have more, and I am not an idiot. Well, I mean that's debatable sometimes, but I am not as big of an idiot as I as some may think. Eighty percent of the reason these people are coming, if not more, is so they can be around other people, and they can, and they can see friends, they can connect, and they can. And I haven't like I can't tell you how many like I'm just I'm so pumped I can't wait. I'm counting down the days to this camp, and to, it's to the camp. It's not to the running. It's to the camp. But it's it, the energy, the amount of energy you can get from from being around people is so invaluable it's just that you can't put up you can't put a price tag on it on i think what it does for people and their motivation their energy and can being able to continue on through times where they can't connect with people and i think it's just it's been it's been great i know for me personally you and i both train alone pretty much unless we train with each other (laughs) we train alone um unless you're going to yoga and you can't talk to anybody but as exhausting as like the camps are that we have or these things that we have or like going to races and when we're not participating just the like it's exhausting and it takes like two days to recover but after that i I think those to me personally are the most those are the times where i'm the most energized throughout the year uh is just the, the amount of energy you can take from other really being around really really good people Mm -hmm. yeah man it's like i think when we get into triathlon, uh, whether or not we often or you know face it straight ahead or not, we're kind of trying to move into a different place in our lives. I think uh, a lot of us, I think, think think that's pretty historical. Think want to mm-hmm. make some changes, do some good things for our body and our mind, and all this kind of stuff. So let's. Uh, I want to get in shape. I want to do this. And triathlon seems like a great way to go. And I think what we underestimate is what that means, kind of sometimes to our circle of friends. And how it can, um, and, and, and as an older gentleman, which I am in my 50s now, I have seen uh, waves of acquaintances come and go, those types of things. And so you move into a different area of mindset and health and wellness and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And then what happens is like there's a lot of people that uh, have trouble letting you go into that space or... They want to hold you back, maybe, or you can't, you know, you're, you're basically making new friends, I think, a lot of times, and trying to connect uh, with like-minded people, and that could mean anything. That could that doesn't necessarily mean triathlon, but it means people that are trying to progress and get better and do things for themselves and, and you know, mm-hmm. live. And there's a, you know, kind of a learning curve there, or, or a, a tough spot at times for people that are just new into triathlon who haven't kind of found their tribe so to speak and i agree you know we're going to this uh, for me the run camp with having 60 people on site for three or four days or whatever um with running in between to me it feels like a race but kind of all being in the same hotel and all hanging around a little bit long after the race and you get really some quality time with people that uh are sort of on uh, their own kind of quasi-isolated journeys coming together. It's sort of like, hey, man, you know, it's sort of a summit of uh, like, hey, I'm changing my life summit. Let's do it together, you know, and just, just to be able to share and feel that and experience that, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I lobby hard for that extra night after any kind of race <laughs> to stick around so people can kind of share stories and really get to know each other because you know how it goes. It's like, yeah, we'll hang out at the race. And it's like the only time you see him is running by on the second loop. He's like, hey, how you doing? Good. Good to see you, man. See you next year. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> I mean, that's just so shallow, man. Yeah, you uh, are a huge advocate for that. But, you know. That's just that's me, but you know that's my personal agenda. <laughs> Hopefully, it is. But it's uh, it's. From, I feel some love coming that way sometimes. I or. we're we're working. We're I'm listen. I'm I'm trying to work that way. Uh, but as I think, as a quote I saw a few years ago, I think it really kind of hits home for this. It's if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Mm. And I think that that just like having people around you to be there for you to support you to kind of be in the you know 
to be in the tr- in the training trenches with you like it just it gives you it gives you motivation and energy to do things you wouldn't normally do you know it, when you have company you know whether it's at camp or whether it's in a group setting whether it's we're, we're not regardless of, of the environment if it's if the person or that feeling is there physically or just emotionally and mentally it's just different and and so i think it's just really really and I, we, I get that question all the time. It's like, how do you, you know, you're not local. How can we possibly work together? Um, and it's hard to explain. You know, I think it's because uh, it, you, you have to put a little bit more effort in, I think, when you work with athletes remotely. Um, but as with anything, I think if you you just, you have to put in, I think, honestly, more effort uh, when you work with someone remotely versus when you do uh, just kind of locally hands-on. And I think it actually works out better than I think people would, would say because a lot of times when you see somebody for the day or for like an hour, you kind of don't feel obligated to even like touch base again for another couple of days versus when I know for me with all the athletes that I have that I work remotely with, some in other countries – it's you have to kind of keep up tabs every single day, and I love that because you you kind of never miss anything. You're always connecting. You're always kind of you kind of always have your pulse on the situation, uh, what's going on, and like you're never really caught off guard. Uh, it's hard. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It's 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 really really hard in in some cases because. I think I was <clears throat> texting this with an athlete this morning. Actually, she was sick, and I was checking to see how she was feeling. And she's like, "Oh, how are you?" And I was like, "I'm good." I was like, "But you know, honestly, it's it's a really really tough time of year for people. And when you work with a lot of athletes, then some of your athletes have tough times, you know. And then that kind of weighs on you as a coach. I think when you when you're in touch and when you're um, you know when you're you know kind of communicating and taking things you know, day to day, it's just kind of, it's hard, you know, you just, it's, it's, you love it, but anytime you're engaged, it's just difficult, but I, I, I love it because I love to work with people. And, and again, I think that that goes with the continuity you have when you surround yourself with, with, with people and, and it's energizing, but it's also so nice to have when things just totally go to shit in your life. You know, you have, you're surrounded by people in a group and, and those are the people that pick you up. Uh, and hope you keep going and not not having anybody you mm-hmm. know which i which is like one of my biggest drawbacks and biggest criticisms of everything going to the online world is is you're probably not gonna you know message the guy you're riding with on zwift who's from switzerland and tell him about your crappy day at work and how your wife just lost her job you know you may tell your friends that you know you may have a few but a lot of people don't a lot of people are in this you know, with with very few, and so I think the more the more, regardless of of who you are and where you are and the community you live in, if you have a local team or not, find people around you that you can communicate with, that you can talk to, that you can reach out to, that will be supportive and your goals and and push you forward to reach them, but also be there when things don't go right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that to me has been one of the most invaluable parts of, or just the part that's in probably enriched my life more than any with working with so many athletes is the friendships and and the good times and the hard times you know because it i think it, that's what really concretes you within a, in a relationship and a friendship with anyone athlete or not athlete yep it's it's funny that now that i'm um what's my title again the uh, club administrator you're, you're a club administrator coordinator wellness coordinator <laughs> The C26 Club coordinator. Um, one of the, I guess, uh, maybe surprises is uh, the fact that I've, I've talked to over 40 people now in the club. We've had 30 to 45-minute conversations about, you know, their interest in triathlon, where they're at right now, where they want to go, etc. cetera. But, the, you know, in, invariably all of them kind of detour into what's going on in their life and what they're all about. And I'm just finding it so cool that again like i said i think uh you know triathlon is sort of the commonality we a lot of us have but there's a certain type of person that gets into the sport because you know they want 
more out of their life, their lives. And, and we're, so we're just getting into personal conversations about what they're, and I'm just like, it's been so refreshing to find out how much we have in common, you know, and, and it just really feels like a good connection, even though we've just talked maybe once on the phone, but I feel like it can build from there. And so I can kind of understand where you're coming from as far as like being in contact with like-minded people and uh, becoming good friends and things like that. And, and, and that's just it is like we're, we've been doing this for uh, over a couple of years now and the, it's undeniable how, you know, maybe it takes a couple of races or a couple of things to get together, but there's just undeniable friendships being built and things like that, that are probably worth more than anything, you know? And no, uh, totally agree. I think that, um, you know, a lot of times people tell us that they, they're really thankful that we're doing this. And, um, and I think, we have taken the approach of, I mean, you know, from the outside, it definitely seems like we're just like, you know, cause the way online businesses work and things like that, people are just always seemingly creating all these sales funnels and trying to, you know, create this and that and this, but we're just, I think we're, I think we enjoy the connective piece so much that we, we have just kind of like, you know, I don't want to say slop been sloppy businessmen or anything like that, but you know what I mean? We just like, it's, it's just like we want to keep it real and genuine and i think that resonates with even people and even like my mom you know last night was saying yeah i I just don't know you guys just i like listening to you because it's just i don't know the conversation's you know real maybe that's not the word and i said well i don't know we hear that sometimes but i like it because people on the other end are real you know what i mean like we're it's just it's just there's something going on and i think ultimately in there somewhere is what i've learned this year you know on on the deepest level you know you to go back to your initial question is that uh you know you're not actually a hermit uh, yeah that and it's honestly um dare i say reaffirmed my belief in humanity (laughs) whoa 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 (laughs) you haven't been on facebook this morning have you no i haven't not no, I no, I, I, you know, people. It, no, I totally one hundred percent agree with you, uh, and it's just funny because I, people who I come into contact with and I'm friends with and aren't involved in any of this, they get so easily like angered and fed up and distraught over so many things, and well, I. Well, I can see that in some areas of life, but for the most part, I'm like, dude, there's a lot of really, 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 really awesome people out there who are nice and kind and supportive and aren't going to, you know, downplay in everything that you do and, and, you know, and big fish you, you know, like, oh, I went out and caught this. Was, oh, yeah, well, I caught this big of a fish. And, like, there's people out there that, like, really truly care. And if you could, like, see and hear some of these stories that some of these athletes have shared the last few weeks in our closed group, like, how can you not, like, feel some kind of, like, positive energy and hope for what is possible instead of, oh, man, the the world's going to hell in a handbasket. I just don't know how we're ever going to survive. I'm like, well, then you're honestly, you're living in the wrong world in the wrong kind of circle. Um, because life is so much who you surround yourself with. And the more people you can do it with, I, I totally agree with you. It's just it's like how, like, how life ain't, life ain't that bad. Like, I understand, like, they're, you know, it's never going to be perfect, but again, you know, I think just the the people you surround yourself with, and the, um, I mean, yeah, I think it's kind of funny. Like when you say you're a sloppy businessman, like I don't even consider this really a business. I'm like, this is like, uh, how many friends can you make? Uh, it kind of like kind yeah. of thing in terms of like, and uh, you know, for me, the greatest. How people are like, so how's it going? You know, because you tell people like you're you're grown and you got a wife and a and a kid to support, and they're like, so how's it going? Like, are things going okay? And I'm like, dude, I've met so many amazing people. It's like not even funny. Mm-hmm. Like, spent the night at their houses, had them to my house, been to, spent days with them, gone to races, met their spouses, met their family. Like, you can't, you honestly, you cannot put a price tag on any of that. Um, because 
you know, it, that that kind of stuff doesn't expire. That stuff can't be spent. That stuff can't be invested. It's just people, and there's just there's like there's no. That's why you can't. That's why you can't pay. Pay for friends. You can't pay for anything like that. The greatest things in life. And I think under some quote, I'm sure it's like the greatest things in life you can't buy. Um, and it's so true. And and but this is. I mean, I thought you look at like the run camp and then the camps we're going to have this year. It's just, it's, it's everything that we definitely never planned. This would be (laughs) when we started it. We Mm -hmm. just, we just kind of knew that we, well, we didn't know that's for sure. (laughs) We just hoped and thought surely to ourselves, there's got to be more than just two people out there, being you and I, who really who feel the need to like want to connect, and we can do it over, and we can do it through this sport. Like the, it's, I think that's why I I, I love our podcast so much, and I'm sure this all, and another reason why some people hate it so much is that we use triathlon is the is the is the vessel, it's not the ocean, and. We, I think, I really feel like we try to come to it in that aspect. Is that it's, it's, it's just a, it's, it's just our vessel to communicate and get to one point A and point B. But the ocean is the environment, and the atmosphere, and the life that we have, and and things that we go through, and how we share it with people. And guess what? It turns out there's actually quite a few other people out there mm-hmm. that are that are looking for that. And it is easily the the best part of quote unquote you know job. Is is connecting with people and and how important it is and how under and how much I feel like I even underestimated it when you when I you know got into full time coaching was how much people like to know that you care and are appreciative because to be honest people have ninety nine point nine percent of people have a unbelievably low expectation when they get a coach uh in my in my experience people have just an insanely low expectation either because they've heard of bad experiences they've had a bad experience or they just don't or they just assume that you're going to get you know x and then y and z is probably up to them but when that doesn't happen and when you feel like you try to go because for me, when my my biggest struggle on a day to day basis is, I feel like I'm not doing enough. Uh, of course, that's, that's also my personality. But like with my athletes, I always feel like I'm not doing enough. What else can I do more? What else can I do? Um, but I think one of the biggest, the best feedbacks I've ever gotten is like, you know, I really appreciate how much you care. And to me, that means the world to me because that's really what I try to communicate through my coaching. Yes, results are important. They're really, really crucial. Because we're in this to get better, and we want things to work. But you know, being there and, and sharing successes, and being there with other things that don't go right, like just showing people that you care, regardless of what you know role you have as a coach or an athlete. I think just befriending people and showing people that you care and that you're because in this world, like we don't really show people we care. We just hit a like button on Facebook. Hmm. Oh, that's sweet. Like. Oh, you shared this great and emotional story. Like, thumbs up. You know, like, you don't actually ask how somebody is doing or are you are you doing okay? Or, like, an athlete the other day get, kind of gave me a hard time. He said, he asked me why I was, why I was giving him a wellness check. Uh, or he, I think, you know, like... Uh, Whatever they call those when like the cops go door to door and do like a wellness a well check or something like that when they feel like somebody's not doing okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> he, he was kind of giving me a hard time. He's like, "Dude, whoa!" He's like, "I only missed two workouts. What's what's with the wellness check?" And I was <laughs> like, "I was." He had just said something in his comments, and I was like, "All right, just I'm just checking on you, man. I'm just yeah, checking right. on you. you." know, it's just it's. But I think in in the world we live in now, it's it's such a rarity for people to truly ask like, "Hey, how's it going?" Mm-hmm. Or like, "It's not it's not too." to belittle you or to to you know come down on you for not doing things it's like hey like i you know as a coach i think as as people in general like i don't know what i don't know you know and i like to know you know most of the time i, I like to know uh but i think it's just 
in the world we live in now, it is. It's just so easy to hit a like button or a heart button on Instagram or whatever it is and just, hey, that's me caring. Instead of truly being like, hey, how you doing? I missed you. Or are you feeling okay? Or how's life? Like, Because usually people are like ready to uh, – I think in humans, like most people, we just generally hold things in. You know, we don't like to open up because we don't want to – we're either not comfortable with it or we just don't think you're going to care. <laughs> or we don't want to over, you know, over bore you or, or burden you with our thoughts and feelings. And, but usually, if you ask somebody genuinely, it's just like you know, it's like you know, verbal throw up, and they just like can't wait to get it out. Um, but again, it just it all comes back to to me to like uh, communicating and, and, and connecting and. Um, it, all right, so let me just tell you. Can I just share a quick story? Sure, buddy. Okay, so I was texting with an athlete who <clears throat> just had like a really incredible race, and and this, uh, honestly, this is like this sums up, I think, life in so many ways. And uh, um, I was she came off like this really really huge, awesome day at. Um, a, a late season event that she had DNF the year before, and came back and was was really um, kind of going through some tough times, and thought she had this really you know incredible job offer, um, and then ended up just not getting it. Something fell through the cracks, and she was just really just totally 100% uh, devastated. And you know, of course, in my usual way, I said, "Well, hang in there. You need to hop back on and read the obstacles the way." read it again uh <laughs> and she said i actually started it last night but so a week's gone by and she was traveling going to some conferences and hanging out with her family and stuff like that and um in earlier december you know she said you know i got pulled off my game there but i was wrong i can choose to be happy and still keep trying to get my goals i'm ready to start training and get back to work and uh i just texted her this morning and said how you doing buddy and she said coach i missed you I'm doing okay, stressed but hanging in there. You won't believe what happened. The job offer that I told you got canceled. They came back to me, went out of their way to make it happen, and I finally got the offer yesterday. I submitted my resignation at work today. They are not happy, but I'm waiting to hear back so that I can go to this new job. And like, that is just, that is, A, that's just totally awesome. But B, I think the just the spirit of perseverance and choosing to be happy and choosing to make not make concessions with your own life based on one thing bad that happens usually things turn out better you know I, and I can't tell you this and like from a life standpoint and a training standpoint like how many times I've had athletes have just really 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 Sometimes unfathomable and unimaginable, just shitty things happen to them, only for weeks later to have something turn around and be just like the greatest thing that's ha- happened to them. And every single time they come back and they say, I think triathlon helped me not give up, help me endure this momentary pain that it would pass, that it will get better if I just keep going. Because most people quit. Most people just give up. One bad thing happens, they just walk away. And they throw in this, like, woe is me temper tantrum of, of whininess. And, and it's borderline pathetic sometimes that, oh, woe is me, it always happens to me, I can't believe. But then you have other, other people who are like, yeah, it, it's, it, it's, it's crappy, it, it's terrible, it's awful in this moment. But I can tell you right now, I'm not going to let it stop me. And I'm going to continue on. I'm going to make something great happen. I'm going to... It, this isn't the end of me. This isn't great, and it's not fun. And I'm not. I'm not telling you it's tr- trying to be this. You know, it's not motivating, and this, it's not motivating right now. It doesn't feel great, but I can tell you, and that's not going to stop me. And then they get new jobs, and they get, and they they find better people in their life, and they get raises, or they they're something great happens to their family. And I just can't tell you how many times I've had athletes say that if it wasn't for doing this sport that teaches you if you wanted to that teaches you not to give up or especially in ironman racing and we always you always talk about this a lot 
is that whatever you're feeling, don't believe it because it's going to change. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, uh, on the bike, on the run, like don't get attached to this feeling of how terrible things are because guess what? In like a mile, you're going to feel like you're running on clouds. But then again, when you're running on clouds, don't get don't get too attached to that either because that's not going to stick with you probably. But it's it's just that, and how many times people have taken that mentality that they've they've made on their own um, into the rest of their lives, and how it's been such a positive, how they've been able to get through things in their life they never would have been able to get through without it. And to me, that is the that is the the essence of why doing sports and endurance sports especially and the resiliency it can teach you or it can just concrete in you how you know how things just don't last but if you 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 as a person i think can outlast basically anything as long as you just don't give up uh and i just think it's a that's triathlon to me is just like one of those it is that sport that with any ultra endurance endeavor whether it's ultra marathons or, or crazy, you know, uh, through hikes or climbing Everest, Ironman, so with anything like that, that that pushes the limits of, of how bad you really want something. I think you, it, it, it can never be overstated the impact that it has to other parts of your life, and I actually, and I think it's it's uh, you just you can't put a price tag on it, and you can't, and you can't put it in a bottle. It's a metaphor for life, and I always use Ironman, but it could be half, it could be an Olympic because of the same thing, or a sprint, you know, the feelings you get that you go through that. And that's why, to your point, when you can crystallize those moments and realize how, how often you overcome something in a training run or a bike ride or whatever the case may be, and if you can, I think that's ultimately the goal is to transfer that to life because if if you can really get master what you're learning out out on the course or out on your training runs and realize that you know when you face uh, a situation in your life whether it be at work or at home and there's a tough situation if you can kind of just take your close your eyes and take a breath and regroup and then just keep pushing on because it's all about you know swimming's all about getting in the pool you know or in the lake or getting just jumping in and once you, you know, it's cliche, but I mean, once you get going, you know, I, but it's so true. It's just like, how many times have I forgotten little lessons I've learned, but the more you do it, the more repetitive you are. And I think that's what this sport becomes a lot of times is it's like, you know, you get to mile 16 and you can't move, but then you somehow figure out how to move and how can you transfer that into your work day or whatever the case may be your relationships Mm -hmm. just kind of keep going and keep on keeping on yeah yeah because it's it's this illusion you know that is and that's the hard part too that's what like one of the things i struggle with in our little business and i always like to use this as a microcosm of everything that that is out there it's like we you know we proved that going every monday and thursday on the podcast is really about all it took you know and but it was that commitment and that dedication to that that has spawned so many amazing other things and then when i think about okay what's next you know like i've been (laughs) struggling with our instagram you know because that's supposed to be uh, instagram is the next this and that and uh you know i have my runs on that but it's sort of like i haven't been able to break through there and But you look at Instagram all the time, and I realize that I struggle with it, I think, because what you see on there mostly is is maybe an illusion. So I I just want to be real with that, and I haven't figured out the, you know, I guess the approach or something. Um, But I guess it's just maybe putting... And I just basically, and I just totally quit on you on Instagram. I I just don't even have it on my phone. I don't even have it on my phone anymore. I got so sick of it. I just took it off my phone. I was like... See, you, have fun, man. Curse but you know what I mean? It creates this illusion. I think that's what uh, a lot of times we face. Is and I get into those cycles where I'm looking at things and I'm like, oh my god, this person's traveling and they're in Bermuda and look at all these great pictures. Their life is supposed to be easy, but you don't see. It's like you know, 
back when you were drinking and we go out to the bars. I'm sure you knew you saw that guy that always seemed like he was a just a had life by the balls. He was always in a good mood and you'd be like, Man, he's always so much fun and in a great mood but you see him maybe like two out of twenty four hours and he's probably just miserable <laughs> the rest of the time. But you know what I mean? He's yep. in your face oh, in I the do. right in the right time and he you know, or these Instagram models are looking so amazing, and then you read the stories about how shallow their life is because you know, it's just like a, they have to spend eight hours trying to get the right Instagram photo, and then they don't feel like it's them, and they get caught in this trap of going down this road, and that's what it is, man. Just like you got to be true to yourself, and I think a lot of things fall into place that way. And and being unwavering in that. Yeah. And being true to yourself, you know, and, and knowing that, you know, just doing the best for you. And then again, like having, uh, uh, I had a, uh, I gave, I give him a hard time for this, but an, an athlete sent me something totally not like, like work related to his work, uh, and asked me to review it, um, uh, because he said I would be brutally honest. <laughs> And I thought to myself, why is why is that even like a phrase? Well, brutally honest. Yeah, because like, isn't aren't you supposed to just always be honest, whether somebody whether you want to hear it or not? You There's should shades be, of honesty. Why? I like, wish you. Well, I think it's all based on delivery. Uh, and you know, I'll be honest, my delivery just flat out sucks sometimes. But my intent is always just to be honest, because I think so many times everybody wants to wants to give you the you know the pat on the back for you know not doing crap but at the same time like it's it's also called like you know holding yourself accountable you know and and it's not it's not brutally honest like honesty honesty and accountability saves people's lives and i won't go into like that deep but honesty and accountability is what most people truly need to hear in order to better themselves in in certain ways and you need you need friends that that will tell you that, and then that will, and that will be there, regardless. To be like, hey, let me. I need to tell you something, and just be totally honest with you. But it doesn't have to be brutal. It might feel brutal, um, depending on what hour of the day. It might be brutal coming from me, but uh, the intent's all. <laughs> the intent's always to be honest. But you know, be honest with with other people, and be honest with yourself, and and just be as as genuine, I think, as possible. Um, because I think what you'll find, kind of going back to connecting with people, is that is that if you're just genuine and you just kind of are who you are unapologetically. <laughs> Sorry. Do you like that one? Yeah, it made me think of something, uh, a story I've been uh, dealing with with the body, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but I said, uh, you know, there's actually people out there who, who are actually going to still care about you and like you. Yeah. Uh, versus like totally trying to just fake your way and pretend your way through things. And then you sit down and have coffee with somebody and it's like, wait a minute. That's it's, it'd be like going on a, you know, going on like a snap, a Snapchat, Tinder, match.com date. And you, you think you're going to get like a, you know, a five foot nine blonde model and you wake up and it's, you know, Mildred, the librarian who's 73. Mm. And you're like, wait a minute, that's not, that, wait a minute, that's not, yeah, it's not enough for this, but you know, it's, uh, it's just, just be you and, and, and be true to that regardless of, of anybody else. And, and yes, I swear to you, this is triathlon related. Yeah. And me, <laughs> no, I, I dare, <laughs> do I dare go off on the story? I've been trying to help Gosh. a buddy who has, uh, my friend has been, he's just crazy about this woman. And, uh, and he, you know, to the point where he's just not himself, you know, like every tax, he's like asking me, should I send this text or, you know, or <laughs> like whatever. And, uh, so, you know, she's kind of stringing him along and, and I keep telling him like, dude, you just got to back away. You can't be so like up, up front with everything, even though it's admirable. And, you know, I know I, she knows that you care and that you got your communications on top and blah, blah, blah. And, so I'm trying to get him to just calm down and, you know, let it take its course because he wants to see her every day. And she's obviously, you know, taking a few days to get back to him here and there and all this stuff. And he finally had a conversation with her the other night. And uh, 
He goes, dude, he goes, be honest. You be brutally honest. I know you'll be honest with me, man. I know you'll be honest with me. <laughs> and uh, he said, we had a great conversation. And then I said, hey, you know, this was like a few days ago. And he's like, I'm going to, is it okay? How about, if, is it cool if I call you on Christmas and wish you a Merry Christmas? And she's like, yeah, that'd be great, you know? And then they hung up and he said everything felt great. And then he just had this impulse to run out and buy her a card. And then he went to the um, uh, post office and the lady is like, <laughs> I don't know if standard mail will get there in time. You might want to do express mail. And he's like, all right, cool. So he had just had this conversation the f- previous night. He went, or that night he went to the mailbox and she talked him into express mail. And that like a, a huge card, this like flowery card thing showed up like the next morning or whatever. At her house. I'm like, dude, that's just oh too God. much. He goes, he goes, is that, was that bad, man? I just started hollering and laughing. I go, dude, this sounds like a sitcom. You're you're the sitcom guy right now. You're not being true to yourself, but and and, and to be honest, <laughs> and the other kind of funny thing is he's also taking relationship advice from the 54 year old single guy. <laughs> That's what I told him. I go, what do you think <laughs> I know? Goes, I go, dude, I could probably I, the best. Had, yeah, so I go, that might actually be good. That might be long game stuff right there. That <laughs> might exactly. Be, but as far as you're asking me tactics. That's definitely not playing hard to get. I mean, that's not playing the game at all. <laughs> she just, like, every time you send her something in the mail or flowers show up, I go, what are you going to send her a uh, singing Christmas card now? <laughs> with exactly. the Like the chorus group? <laughs> uh, I said, yeah, you're asking the wrong guy, man. I, I only know how to play uh, the game, which I don't play anymore, but I, I still remember it a little bit. But what does that have to do with triathlon? I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't, but I'm sure it has to do with your family and your friends and your in-laws. So you're welcome. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to everybody. Christmas. It's been a phenomenal year. And um, I got to tell you, um, I know that the New Year's resolutions and the New Year and all that is a little bit of a you know kind of manufactured thing. But I am looking forward to... From this point on through next year, I mean, the, the, I'm, I'm looking forward to the immediate future of all the things we're doing, all the races we're going to have, all the camps and everybody that's going to come join us and all the new club members and, uh, you know, on and on and on. I'm, I'm not overly excited, but I just feel good about it. Yeah, don't get too up, man. Don't, no, I wanna just don't, be a, don't try to express ship those feelings. No, no, no. Just going to be, you know, steady. Exit. Steady Eddie, man. Uh, Steady we do. Eddie. We wish We wish everyone a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Uh, we'll come to you after Christmas for your pre-New Year's uh, podcast as well. Uh, enjoy the time with your family. Be flexible with your training. Uh, have a little bit of dessert, but, you know, go for a run if you want to. And uh, it's almost over. It's in the in-laws packing. Yeah, I, somebody had uh, said they were going to be busy during Christmas week. Can we take the workouts out? And I did, and I said, unstructured day, do something if you can, but really try to do something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just try to do something. Anything. Anything. Walk the dog, uh, walk yeah. the in-laws, do it. Yeah, walk away from the in-laws. Uh, and wish wish, uh, wish your mom, Mama Torali, a happy birthday from the Bruces. I will. I'll All wish right, you. She'll uh, hear that, and same goes. Wish your family, everyone in it. Oh, I will. The best. Tell Hayden Mike says hi. <laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> I will. Merry Christmas, man. All right, same to you, buddy. All right, see you, man. Yep, bye-bye. <laughs>